Thank you very much for your nice and kind um, introductions. Uh, I hope you can see my screen and can hear me. Can give me a sign. Yes, it's, it's working. We can see you. Perfect. So um, as Patrick and, uh, uh, was saying, I will uh, present Native Scientists and then Yulia will present the results of a study on impact that we made um, to, to our program. At Native Scientists, what we do is to connect children with scientists across Europe to tackle uh, educational disadvantages. And the story of Native Scientists is very linked to my own personal story uh, because I, um, I grew up in a rural place in the north of Portugal, very far away from any kind of science or even higher education. You can see here a picture of me and my brother and a picture of the city where I'm from, uh, which was a, a village actually back then and still looks a lot like a village. And, um, and why Native Scientist story is linked a lot to my personal story, it's because I, I learned about bacteria in school when I was nine years old and these completely changed my life because I was so fascinated by this, this concept of living organisms that we cannot see that I decided at the age of nine that I wanted to become a scientist. And that's all, it's all good to decide this at such an early age. The problem was that because I come from this rural place with no access to science, I grew up hearing the common, you know, uh, sentence, you're crazy. Why do you want to be a scientist? Don't do that. Go be something else. And you hear this when you're nine, when you're 10, 11, 12, and, and so on years old. And, uh, and you start to really feel it's, it's a barrier and it's something people do not encourage you to do. Well, I did become a scientist. And when I became a scientist and I felt a scientist for the first time in my life. This happened when I was doing my PhD at Imperial College London. I then felt a, a, a strong call to go to schools, to talk to children, so that I could break the barrier of accessing science that I felt as a child. And this is pretty much how Native Scientist starts, by this real almost like an urge uh, that I felt into going to schools to talk about my work to children so that uh, children like me uh, didn't feel the barrier of accessing science as high as I felt. So we created Native Scientists to really tackle educational disadvantages and inequities in accessing science with three very important things um, in mind. The fact that there is a very sharp decline on the interest for science in children at around the ages of 10, 11 or 12. The fact that a lot of the, sh the children still perceive science as difficult and as not for people like me. And the, the stereotype uh, that it still exists uh, real, in, in relation to scientists, the, white men with the um, white hairs, like mad hair and lab coat. And, uh, and we, we, there is still a big need to break this, this representation of scientists. And how are we doing this? Well, we uh, design, implement uh, and implement science education and outreach programs that are really focused in connecting children and scientists, but, in, but they really stress the importance of promoting meaningful connections between uh, children and scientists. And the reason why we want to create these meaningful connections is really to broaden the horizons of these children, children that are typically underserved and or underprivileged, uh, to boost the children's motivation for science and to promote higher education and scientific careers. And so far in our eight years of existence, we have, has, we have established more than 20,000 connections between children and scientists. 
We've done this through two main programs. Well, one main program and, and another program that complements it, uh, which target ethnic minority and migrant children. And you can see here some of the uh, photos taken in, in these uh, science workshops that we, we promote among the, these ethnic minority and migrant children. Uh, we've been in more than 200 schools in nine uh, different European countries, reached over uh, 5,000 children. We've also been in uh, two museums and two universities. We, we are present in 30 different cities across uh, these nine European countries. And we've actively engaged with more than 1,000 scientists who have delivered and uh, participated in the science workshops. Uh, this is the most popular program that we have. It's the Native Schools program, and it's um, really the program that started it all. Uh, as I was saying, I was a Portuguese um, PhD student in London back in 2013. And I felt this uh, very um, strong call to go to school to talk about my work. And what we did was to actually bring together uh, four or five Portuguese speaking scientists in London. And we went to a London school to talk to the children who were born to Portuguese parents about science in the heritage language of these children. So in Portuguese, my mother tongue, and uh, the heritage language of these children. Uh, and so we started like this in London and very quickly we realized that there was something very special about these workshops because the scientists have the biggest smiles ever. The kids were like almost hysterical because they were so excited about it. And the teacher was over the moon, very, very pleased with the, what uh, she or he saw at the workshops. So very quickly, uh, other migrant communities in London started to be interested in these and replicating the concept. So we, we started doing it for the Spanish, for the French, the Estonian, the Turkish, the Arabic and so on. So it increased. We, we replicated the model for other migrant communities and we also saw interest coming from other cities uh, in the UK and in Europe. So we also expanded to, to other cities and countries. Today, this is the network of local coordinators for the Native Schools program that we have. It's roughly around uh, between 35 and 40 migrant communities in nine different European countries and between 25 and 30 different cities. And it's been uh, at this level for five years now. Uh, so every year we are consistently having this network of volunteer scientists who want to organize these native schools workshops. And to complement this program, we also have the Native Explorers program. It also targets ethnic minority and migrant children and is built on the concept of promoting both the science and the heritage language. But while the Native Schools program is for kids between six and 12 years old, and it takes the scientists out of the lab and puts them in, in school, the Native Explorers does the opposite. It targets teenagers between 12, 13 and, and 17 years old, and it takes the students out of the school and brings them to university, or a, a research center, or a museum. The, the, the feedback that we've been getting is really uh, encouraging. Immediately after the workshop, we um, most of the, all the time we do the four feedback questions, very quick feedback questions, and uh, questions like, "Is this the first time you've I've met?" you are meeting a scientist and you can say here that most people, for most people it is, most children it is. Uh, we also ask if they've learned something new and uh, for most children they've learned a lot of new things. And we also ask if they like to meet the scientists and uh, for um, many of the kids um, 
uh, they, they liked it a lot. They also say things like, this was my best class ever, when we will do it again. Or for the teenagers, we've also uh, very often come across a comment like this. This workshop was important because I didn't know there were people like me attending university. They compliment saying that they thought university was only for their French colleagues if they are in France or their British colleagues if they are in the UK and so on. And then we also have very good testimonials from teachers, including this one that uh, said our students thoroughly enjoy the Native Scientist workshop including those who can be a bit reluctant to learn. I was very impressed with the design of the workshop and the scientists' abilities to engage our students in their research. Three years ago, we were also very um, happy when we received an email from Tiago uh, saying that he had participated in a, in a native schools workshop when he was 15 years old. And he had just received the news that he was accepted to go to university to, to do his bachelor in physics. And so um, he really re felt uh, this uh, need to get in touch with us. And he said that it, the Native Scientist Workshop really gave him the confidence to believe that what he wanted was possible to achieve. And he is indeed the first person in his family to go to university. And it's very, very big achievement and um, very happy for him. He's now doing a master's at Imperial College. So the two programs, the Native Schools and the Native Explorers programs, they are really built on three key things. They need to promote science learning. They need to promote language learning, heritage language learning, but at the same time, it's promoting multilingual skills and promoting the interaction between uh, scientists and children so that children have the possibility to interact with these role models. And our work targeting migrant kids or ethnic minor minority children is really important because uh, both at the European level and even global level, migrant children are twice more likely to underachieve in science than their non-migrant peers. So there is educational disadvantage here that needs to be addressed. This is how a typical workshop would look like. You can see the scientists and each scientist is talking to either three, four or sometimes five children. In total, we usually have four or five scientists and the kids are grouped in four or five groups and it happens a little bit like in speed dating and so uh, each uh, scientist talk, talks to each group of kids for around 15 minutes making a total of uh, 60 minute uh, hands-on science workshop. By, by doing what we do, our workshops really rely on a, a concept which is called content and language integrated learning. So because the, the scientists go to their school setting and talk about science in the heritage language of the kids, the kids are both learning science and, and, and language at the same time. It also is based on this carousel teaching strategy because the kids are divided. Uh, in, well, the classroom has four or five stations and the kids travel and go through every station and in each station they interact with the scientists. And then uh, because we take four or five different scientists to, to the same workshop, we say that our workshops rely on the science tapas concept because it really gives children the opportunity to taste different flavors, different fields of science. And that way they can also have a broader view of science, not just a, 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 the, the idea that science is biology or something like that. Uh, finally, the scientists can act as role models for these children. And they, uh, 
always bring supporting materials that the kids can can touch, can feel, can smell, or you know, or they can move. And there is um, dialogue is really promoted uh, by having these small groups of children interacting with the science. We've called this concept the STEM plus language concept, and this would be a denomination of, uh, for the science communication field, as usually these type of activities are, are referred to as STEM outreach activities. In our case, we do STEM plus language outreach activities. Uh, coming from the educational field, we would describe our workshops as a workshops that rely on this concept of science and heritage language uh, integrated learning. And so Yulia will be talking more about this and uh, uh, the paper that we, it's under revision, uh, coining the concept and defining the concept of, of these two concepts that you see here. Uh, finally, I just want to highlight that our workshops are really people-centered. So for us, what the focus is really to create these meaningful connections. So putting together people, scientists and children, they have something in common, a shared background, a shared heritage language. And it's not so much about going there to teach um, about um, you know, specific like uh, cancer or uh, marine biology or something like this. Of course, content is taught through the workshops, but for us, it's much more important the common sense of identity and the, the empowerment of the children um, in, in, in meeting scientists and in meeting scientists that look like them or speak like them. For everything, for all of this to be possible, we focus a lot in uh, building, training and growing a web-based network of volunteer scientists that volunteer to go to these uh, workshops and talk about their work. And of course, I'm not alone on this. We are a big team, uh, 19 people in the core team, eight advisors, Patrick is one of them, you can see him here. Uh, 43 uh, local coordinators that are in the different cities uh, making this possible. And every year, more than 300 scientists actually engaging with children. And now I pass over the word to Yulia, who is going to show you the results of the effectiveness study that we did on the Native Schools project. Uh, just to wrap up, uh, a key concept that native scientists is that our collective impact matters and we're strong believers that together we can change the world, world specifically we can improve science education for every children. Thanks a lot. Julia, over to you. So thank you very much. But Joanna, for your very nice uh, introduction into this great program, I think you already mentioned a lot of things I can now again maybe frame from the perspective of, of educational psychology in my talk. And so I think we have really a very good connections between our two parts. Thank you also Patrick and Sophie for the invitation and the kind introduction and I'm now happy to yeah to start the second part um, about the results Joanna just uh, mentioned of our evaluation study. Um, it would be nice if you could just give me a short feedback if you can also see um, my screen. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So thank you again, Johanna, for the introduction and I will now directly go on with the results um, where we try to put all the things Johanna just introduced into a kind of empirical study. And so um, in this project, um, next to Johanna and myself, also other people um, from Native Scientists from the University of Tübingen and Lancaster contributed and also thank you very much to all of you for your work and your impact on this on this great project. So I will talk now about um, the effectiveness of this um, innovative science outreach program um, Joanna just introduced to you. You already mentioned um, 
the theoretical background and what I will present now is a kind of the same thing, just with maybe a little bit more psychological words, but it's exactly the thing you just mentioned. We know generally um, in science education that it's really a challenge to inspire ethnic minority students to pursue higher education in STEM. This is a current issue for migrant students, but also generally um, a theme in science education. Um, we already heard that migrant students are at risk to underperform in the STEM fields. And so we know um, that the fostering of achievement, but also motivation of this group has a very high educational and societal relevance. And what Joanna just described, what happens in this workshop are the combination of positive out of school science learning experiences in the heritage language um, by the STEM professionals that share the same multicultural identity. And we assume that this might be beneficial for migrant students motivation and motivation for science, but also for the motivation for their heritage language. And we try to investigate exactly those questions um, with the study. And what we did, we tried to evaluate just this uh, program you just heard about, which brings together the students with the scientists, like we just heard in the after school workshops in the same um, in the same heritage language. And what we tried is really to bring this kind of things that are going on there in a kind of effectiveness study and to try out if we can really say something what's going on there and if what students learn and what is the effectiveness of this program. And we did to answer these questions different things. We looked first on um, immediate effects. So we looked what do students think directly after those workshops compared to what they thought maybe about science before. And we also looked on the effectiveness in a control study. So we looked on the midterm effects after four weeks. I will explain the design um, in a minute. What we also tried to do is to put all the things we just heard into a kind of a model. So psychologists also <laughs> always love to have a model for this kind of interventions or programs. Of course, we just, as Joanna said, we we feel that there's something going on and there's kind of we had ideas what might be going on and we try to build a model that might bring all those things that might be going on together and and yeah, to, to have a kind of theoretical background for the processes we investigated. So uh, what we tried to do, we, we identified an intervention model with um, three core components. So those are the components we assumed that they are most relevant for the outcomes so that they might have an effect um, on, um, on the intervention goals. And those are, as we already heard, this very specific instruction of STEM in heritage language, like a, a kind of adoption of content and heritage language integrated learning, in our case, science and heritage language integrated learning. Um, we have um, the hands-on and minds-on activities in the STEM subjects, and very important, the science communication, the direct interaction with the STEM professionals. And the mediators you can see here are the processes we assume that might go on. For example, um, we assume that there might be positive learning experiences in STEM and the heritage language. Of course, an, an increased knowledge in STEM and heritage language and maybe even most important, the identification with the provided STEM professionals that might be really perfect role models for the students as they share this uh, comparable um, multilingual and cultural background. On the right hand, you can see the expected outcomes. So we expected an increased motivation for STEM and the heritage language. And we looked on direct effects like the intrinsic interest, um, the attitude, um, so motivational variables and self-concept variable variables. And we looked also for possible intentions for future participation in STEM. So for example, for the questions if the students afterwards are willing maybe to, to do more science in the future or to, to do more scientific activities. All this um, intervention is embedded in an informal extracurricular setting. Johanna already introduced the science tapa style and a carousel style with the rotating groups of small uh, groups of four to five students. 
and having a closer look to that, what, what's going on um, by this components in this workshops. Um, we can observe that first the STEM professionals speak in the heritage language with the students and they also encourage the students to speak in their heritage language with other students and of course uh, with the scientists. Um, we have the science tapas, so the really awaking of interest by many different topics and themes and the students get the possibility to interact with the STEM professionals and the materials they bring into the workshops and also get to know the scientists by themselves, but also, of course, the, their scientific work they do. And the STEM professionals, they do not just talk about their work, they also talk about their own history, like Joanna also told, told us. They, they talk about um, how they came to science or what was their career about being multilingual in or doing science in another country. And also this is very important and gives a close connection to the students. And the STEM professionals also promote dialogue and positive interactions with the students. So out of this model, um, we um, have the following research questions we looked um, in, the, in the study. So we wanted to know if those native scientists workshops positively affect interest, attitude, value and self-concept in science, but also um, in the heritage language of migrant students. So more specifically, we looked um, if the participation in the workshops influence future participation in science, intrinsic interest in science, self-concept, entertainment value and science of migrant students. We also looked for those outcomes for the domain of, of Portuguese. So also the question if the self-concept for the student's heritage language might be positively affected. And an additional question we looked if it makes a difference with which kind of motivation the students come into the workshop. So we looked if students with low and high motivation might maybe benefit differently from the workshops. And of course, what is always important, we also try to integrate in this um, quantitative analysis some qualitative data. So we also uh, got feedback of the scientists and of the students just to get an idea what is going on, how they rate um, the workshop. So they also um, gave us direct feedback and we also collected open questions and the, their ratings of the workshops. To do the um, more uh, empirical part, we used um, something that is in educational psychology, kind of the, the gold standard. So um, we worked with a randomized block design with waitlist control groups. And you can see here we had two groups. The EG is the intervention group and the CG is the control group. And this means that we have kind of, we can compare if students who participated in the workshops uh, might um, behave after a couple of weeks differently compared to students who did not participate in those workshops. And what you can see here, we did with both groups a pretest. So we asked for students, for example, motivation or their, their interest for science. And then the intervention group, they participated in the native scientist workshops at different cities. They did an immediate post test directly afterwards, just to get an idea what is going on directly afterwards. And then we had about after four weeks later, a delayed post test. And in this post test also the control group participated and that they also could participate in the program. We did not just want them to come for the testing, so they could also, of course, participate then in a native scientist workshop and did also a post test afterwards. And what we can do now here, we can um, in, in the first idea get um, a look on the short term effects. This means that we can just compare what happens after the workshops directly compared to what the students believe before. So we just have kind of pre and post test comparison which is of course um, limited in, in, in terms of causality because we don't have a control group for that, but it just gives an idea if something might go on directly afterwards, might there be a change, for example, in those main outcomes. And what we did second is we compared what happened after those four weeks. So we could compare this um, motivation and interest in science and the heritage language afterwards, and we could for those measures compare the groups who participated in the workshops with the groups who just did not participate just to see if there might be a different. What we used for, for kind of instruments, 
we used for the science part um, the intrinsic interest measures for attainment value, self concept, and the intention for future participation in science. And we used for the lang the language part in this case the Portuguese and um, also intrinsic interest, attainment value, and self concept. So central motivational variables. The children had to fill out uh, questionnaires before and after the workshops and also, um, as I said, in the um, in the delayed post test, so they could rate the items from strongly disagree to strongly agree. We offered all items in Portuguese, but also um, included a translation in German or English just to make sure that they really understood it. But the main language of the questions was also Portuguese. So as you can see here, it looked, for example, like that. So students could rate um, the items um, on a questionnaire with these stars and they could just yeah, um, say yes or maybe or a little bit. And what we looked for in, in more detail um, are the concepts I just told you here. You can see some item examples. For example, the students rated, I like everything that has to do with science before and afterwards, or science is important to me. I find science difficult, or I would like to become a scientist. And we also looked for the Portuguese um, motivation. For example, I liked everything that has to do with Portuguese. Portuguese is important to me, or I find Portuguese difficult. The reliability, so the Kronbach's alphas of those scales were overall acceptable until good, so between 0.63 and 0.88. What you can see here is kind of an overview of the sample we used. We had an intervention group which was due to organizational reasons a little bit bigger than the control group. The kids in the study were about about 10 years, so um, between 9 and 11 years in, in, in mean. And as you can see also here, the kids in the intervention group, they were overall a little bit older than the children in the control group. And that's why we controlled for age uh, also in all of our analysis, just to make sure that this difference did not influence too much our, our results. We asked the students in advance what language they prefer and if they had uh, met a scientist before. And as you can see here, um, most of the students say that they prefer both languages, so Portuguese and the school language. And most of them have not met a scientist before, but there were also students um, who might have met a scientist before, maybe because they participated beforehand in the program or maybe from out of school experience. But this is just just to give you an idea about the background and, and the sample uh, we had uh, we had for this study. What we did, I already mentioned, we did this randomized block design with the weightless control groups and uh, repeated measures. And I will present you now the short term effect. So just the comparison of the pretests and immediate post tests for all of the participating children and the effect sizes for that. And then I will present you also the effects after four weeks where we had the control group. We did for that a linear regression analysis and also looked for the for the missing data and tried to 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 make sure that the two groups were comparable. What you can see here is uh, the are the results of the pre and post test comparisons. As I mentioned before, this is not a result that can tell us something about causality, but on the other hand, nothing else happened between the pre and the post test. So the, the students did the questionnaire, they participated, and then we, we asked them again. And what you can see here is that there were um, effect sizes that could be estimated as small to medium, so about 0.5. This means that students um, told us after the workshops an increase in their, for example, interest in science, the attainment value, their self-concept and their willingness for future participation for science. So just a comparison what they said before, what they say directly afterwards, there's a clear tendency that those measures all increased and also increased significantly. And we also had an effect on interest for the heritage language which is also very, very positive because um, as we heard, the combination is the thing that makes the workshop special. So the combination of really the science input and uh, heritage language. What you can see now are the effects after four weeks, the regression analysis. So those are the controlled effects where we look on the effects in comparison to a control group. 
And as you can see here, the effects got a little bit smaller and it's also a little bit more difficult um, to explain. So what you can see here are the effect sizes, so the differences between the children in the intervention compared to the control group. And what we controlled is what kind of uh, motivation or pretest values they had in the beginning. And this is, for example, uh, a value that, that tells us that students in the intervention groups increased um, compared to students in the control group afterwards. And we even controlled for the kind of measures they had before. And as you could um, imagine, we had a kind of test, test time of about four weeks afterwards. And so it was overall very challenging to, to get an idea to find effects for that at all. But we can here at least see a tendency. So this effect, for example, for the attainment value was kind of um, it was kind of close to the significance value, so it was kind of a marginal positive effect. And we also found that for the self concept for the heritage language, the other values were kind of um, not significant. But as I just said, you should not forget that we, we measured those um, motivational um, outcomes after four weeks and we still have a tendency that students might remember what they did and they they have an increased, for example, attainment value compared to the students um, who did not participate. And this is also something that gave us the impression that we are going into um, the right direction and have here at least a tendency that something might go be going on for the science, but also um, for the heritage language variables. To go a little step further, is we'll also look on the differential effects to see um, does it if it makes a difference which kind of which motivation does the students start in the workshops and it's not so important to um, what this kind of uh, bar bars now mean but you see all those interaction terms this is the important thing they were most of them were significant and they were negatively this means that the intervention effects were higher the lower the pretest values of the students are. And this is exactly what Joanna told us also at the beginning that what really we wanted to do is to reach out children maybe which are disadvantaged or really might have a low interest, for example, for, for science. And those were the students who improved compared to the students who already had a high motivation much more. And I think this is the uh, also important or interesting part of the results that we found this kind of pre-test uh, inter-treatment interaction. Um, according to the time, I would uh, finally also give you a, a short uh, impression on the students' responses. So beside this, um, this effectiveness part, we just ask for the workshop success. So we ask them afterwards. So for example, if they learned new words, if they learned new science stuff, if they enjoyed meeting the scientists and if they liked the lesson. And as you can see here, most of the student agreed or even strongly agreed. So overall, those evaluations were very positive. We also asked open questions to get an idea what yeah, might be the most, most important thing for the students and uh, what did they like most? What did you learn? And we also coded and summarized all of the student responses. And the main uh, answers we got was um, the students really liked their increased knowledge in STEM. So for example, I liked everything I liked. I learned things about the earth, the atmosphere, the brain. I liked learning about the cells a lot. But they also mentioned very often that they really enjoyed meeting and interacting with the scientists. For example, I liked most to know what a scientist does or I liked the today's class because I learned much about the things the scientists do. And now I know different types of scientists. We also asked the scientists uh, themselves what they had the impression of the workshops. And um, I know this is now a lot of information. I just wanted to give you an overview and you might have just a look on the items you might be interested most. So we asked for the workshop success, for the scientists perception of impact, the scientists adaptability to context and the outcome expectations for all. And just to figure some of them out, for example, um, the scientists also rated that the students seemed to be really happy that also um, the students were interested um, and were, were really positively engaged with the materials. And here's the language part where we also saw that the scientists really tried to do in the workshop 
language the workshops as, as best as possible and ask questions. So try to really foster the interaction and uh, the science communication with the students and also enjoy it kind of, um, yeah, to teach them about their work and to, to help students, for example, to understand more about science and the work they do. We also ask the scientists for responses what they enjoyed most in the workshops, which might also be um, interesting and, and yeah, important to know. They mostly mention the interest and questions of the students. So, for example, I enjoyed listening to the questions of the young participants and realized once more how important it is to work with the future generations and help them dream and conquer what they can be. They also enjoyed the interaction with the students, so the interaction and the curiosity of the students. And of course, also the doing scientific outreach. So, for example, um, also the chance to look back on their own work, find a way to simplify it and be able to communicate a message. So let's come to the conclusions. What uh, can we learn out all of that? So looking on the empirical results, um, um, we have at least uh, a clear a clear tendency that directly after the workshops we found those um, effects on the increased uh, intrinsic interest, attainment value, self-concept and intention for future participation in science and the intrinsic interest for Portuguese measures. And we found at least after four weeks a tendency. Um, those effects were small or only marginal, but there was at least a tendency of increased attainment value for science and an increased self-concept of ability in Portuguese compared to students in the control group after even a period of, of couple of weeks. We also found that students with low motivation seem to benefit more from the workshops compared to students uh, with a high motivation before. And our um, analysis of the open answers and uh, workshops evaluations uh, demonstrate that overall the workshops were rated very positively by students, but also by the scientists. So what we can see here, this Workshops are really, you should not forget, it's only one afternoon, so they meet the scientists for, for one and a half hours. And so it's really um, a very short term effect, but it has a chance to positively affect the motivation for science and for heritage language. And I showed you the intervention model uh, in the beginning, so we still don't know if this model is, is right or wrong. It's like in science, we don't know, but but we just get the impression that the intervention elements uh, we identified, especially this combination of science and heritage language with the possible role model, seem to be successful in promoting um, students' motivation. And so overall, um, yeah, we see here this is an important starting point, of course, um, for fostering ethnic minority group and also what is the kind of um, motivation or, or vision for, for all people working in the project just to, to bring students to higher education in STEM and, and in the long run maybe yeah to bring them into science and to motivate them to to participate as active citizens in a society facing social technological or scientific challenges those are all the questions we are dealing with at the moment and so i want to thank again all the collaborators and all people who contributed to this project and joanna and myself we are also very happy to answer your questions thank you <laughs>